has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are the family of God and are called by God's name. We are heirs of Christ's kingdom and born of the Spirit. Let us therefore come together in thanksgiving. Amen. This morning our prayers are drawn from Roots on the Web and we come today to hear the Word of God, Mark 1 verses 4 to 11, brought to us by Jeff Hocking and to listen to God's message through the ministry of Anne. Today she'll be reflecting on John's wilderness ministry and the baptism of Jesus our Lord. Later Jenny will bring our prayers of intercession. We have two hymns this morning, both coming from Singing the Faith, number 134, Christ whose glory fills the skies, and we'll follow Anne's reflection with number 345, And Can It Be That I Should Gain An Interest in the Saviour's Blood. I looked up the definition of wilderness, and in a geographical sense, it seems to mean wild lands, untouched by human interference. Perhaps John the Baptist thought the city and the temple were too full of human interference, and that's why he chose to minister in the wilderness. I wonder how many of us right now feel like we're in a wilderness of our own. A lockdown wilderness that cuts us off from each other. So let's begin with prayers of praise and thanksgiving. God, through your might and power, the world was created. And through it now the world is changed and is ever changing. We read in the scriptures of how you have changed people's lives. We hear it in the stories of saints, old and new. We know it through the experience and lives of our own communities. We thank and praise you for all that you have done through the changes you have made and are still making in our lives. We thank and praise you. Today's reading comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, and reading verses 4 to 11. And so John came, baptising in the desert region, and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to meet him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. 
John wore clothing of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Thanks be to God. In our wilderness world it's easy to forget, Lord, that you're there. And yet we should not forget that the people in biblical times flocked to John to repent and to be baptised. So this morning we come and confess our sins and reaffirm ourselves through our prayers. Lord, when you came into the world, things changed. When we came into a relationship with you, things changed. Life became filled with a new sense of purpose and peace. But Lord, sometimes we let you down by doing wrong things or failing to do right things. We're sorry, Lord. Sometimes, Lord, through pride, stubbornness or fear, we build barriers and keep others at arm's length. Even you, Lord. We are sorry. At times we give in to our weaknesses and our temptations and fail to draw on your strength. At times we're troubled by difficult situations and find it hard to trust you. We are sorry, Lord. Help us to turn such things around and turn to you. Help us to learn from the past and drawing on your strength and peace, make a better future. Amen. Lord, when Jesus was baptised, you spoke of your love for him. You've showed your love for us through Jesus' death and resurrection. By the power of the cross, the darkness of our wrongdoing is banished by the light of your loving forgiveness. Amen. I love walking out in the countryside, on my own or with family and friends. There's something about getting out in the fresh air that gives me renewed energy to engage with the more mundane tasks of being a circuit minister. It's such a relief that this at least is still permitted during this latest lockdown. When I was a teenager, I would often go out for long walks along the Cornish coast near where I lived. This has given me a love for the water that has remained with me to this day. Now, one of my favourite walks brings me down alongside the River Derwent to this spot, perhaps a potential site for an open-air baptism, though probably not in January. Having said all that, I can't imagine why John the Baptist would have left his home to head out into the wilderness, living on locusts and wild honey, unless he had received a clear call from God. When we were talking about plans for the YouTube service for this quarter, one of my colleagues observed that if we were to follow the lectionary gospel readings, we would get a lot of John the Baptist this year. We did decide to do that, and sure enough, this is now the third time we've heard about John in recent weeks. This being the case, I was greatly surprised to read over Christmas in a chapter of Brian McLaren's book, We Make the Road by Walking, that he got me thinking about John the Baptist in a way I've never done before. He began the chapter considering Jesus' life in Nazareth and the summary contained in Luke. Jesus matured in wisdom and years and found favour with God and with people. Brian McLaren then said, as Jesus was maturing in Nazareth, his relative John, 
son of Elizabeth and Zechariah, was coming of age back in Jerusalem. As the son of a priest, he would have lived the comfortable, privileged life of the upper classes. We would expect him to follow in his father's footsteps at the temple, offering sacrifices, officiating at festivals and performing ritual cleansings. Wow! That really got me thinking, what was it about John's years as a young adult that allowed God's call into the wilderness to be heard so clearly and led to this response to when he hit his thirties? Was he, as Brian McLaren suggests, protesting against the religious establishment his father faithfully served? We know from Matthew's account that John was critical of the Pharisees and Sadducees who came out to see him. None of the Gospel writers tell us anything of John other than Luke's account of his birth until John appears in the wilderness and began to baptise people in the River Jordan. It's hard to work out exactly where this took place. Perhaps John enjoyed walking alongside the river as I do and stopped wherever he was to talk to those who came to listen. The Gospels do provide some specific locations. Enon near Salim and Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, which was supposed to be near the place where Joshua and the Hebrew people crossed the River Jordan after their 40 years in the wilderness. That place would have had special significance for all who came out to see John from Jerusalem and Judea. Jesus, we're told, came from Nazareth. He would have had a long walk himself if John was still at Bethany. Mark gives us no clue as to why he came, but surely a young carpenter didn't set out on a four or five day walk on a whim. I wonder what would make you leave home and work and head off to see someone like John? Just idle curiosity or conviction that God was doing something new? Mourner Hooker, in her commentary on Mark, suggests that John had adapted the rite of baptism offered to Gentiles who wished to become members of the chosen nation and offered it to the Jews who came out to hear him. His message called people to repent and join the remnant of Israel who were faithful to God. If that is the case, then Jesus, it seems, wanted to align himself with this faithful remnant and join those who were preparing themselves for the coming kingdom of God. Mark tells us that Jesus was baptised by John and as he was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. John had said that the one to come after him would baptise with the Holy Spirit. But here it seems that Mark is at pains to show that Jesus himself was equipped and enabled by the Holy Spirit. In our covenant service last week, we were invited to pray, Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your help again and strengthen me with a willing spirit. Over the years, I have realized that our experience of the Holy Spirit is as unique to each individual as our fingerprints. For some, the spirit does come like the mighty rushing wind that we read about in the book of Acts but I meet many more who speak of a quiet conviction that grows in their hearts that God is with them. They find that the Holy Spirit within gives them the power to persevere when their natural inclination is to give up. We spoke last week of the means of grace, which have been at the core of Methodist practice since the beginning of the movement. As we spend time in God's presence, so we find God's Spirit falls afresh on us. For Jesus, the descent of the Spirit was accompanied by a voice from heaven, which in Mark's Gospel speaks directly to Jesus. You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Jesus had acknowledged God as his Father when aged 12 in the temple in Jerusalem. Now, aged around 30, 
as he emerges from the waters of baptism, he hears God affirming that relationship, declaring him to be his beloved son. This was perhaps an affirmation of Jesus' own sense of calling that prompted him to begin his own preaching ministry. They were also words that shaped his teaching about God. He taught his disciples to pray to their father in heaven and told that story of the prodigal son where the father is on the lookout, longing for the day when his wandering child will return. We can be confident that God longs for us to hear his voice as he says, You are my child, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Pleased not on account of anything we have done, but because Jesus has done all that is necessary, setting us free to live and to love in his name. This is the heart of the Christian message to which we hold on as these dark days continue, remembering the best of all is God is with us. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so we come to our prayers of intercession. After moments of silence in our prayers, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, would you respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we come before you with our concerns for the world. We hold before you in our prayers those who have been evident on our television screens and on radio and in the papers this week for both good and difficult reasons. We hold before you in our prayers those who lead us through these days of pandemic, those who have to make hard decisions and those who struggle to deal with such decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before you in our prayers those who have been made ill through COVID-19 and those who have died because of it and those who continue to suffer in the long term. We hold before you in our prayers all those who work in hospitals and care homes at this time. And we hold before you in our prayers those who care for relatives at home and those who have no one to care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before you in our prayers those who have recently lost loved ones, and we ask that they will know themselves held in your everlasting arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for ourselves as we enter a further period of lockdown and for many a time of great difficulty. Help us to know your presence with us each day, guiding, directing, comforting and supporting always. We pray in the name of the same Trinity that was prayed over us at our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we join together as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen thanks to everyone who took part in the worship service this morning and thanks to everyone who's watched and listened may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen